Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of the Fam Vester podcast. This has been a couple of years in the making, so I am super excited. We're actually launching this thing. Uh, I'm my name is Sunny Burns, and I'll be your host. And I'm your co-host, Sun Marie Burns. Uh, just a little bio about us before we get started. So I'm 28 years old. I work full time as a project engineer for the Department of Defense. And I'm an artist, a former public school teacher, and now a stay-at-home mom. And we've been together nine years now, married for six. And um, we are the parents of two amazing, rambunctious little boys, both uh, four years old and two years old. They keep us very busy. Right. And we write on the FamVestor blog. Uh, we write about financial independence and creating strong families. We also run a rental property business where we have over $1 million in assets and over $100,000 in gross annual rents. Really, it's just two properties. We live in this four-family house and we own another three-family house, but having a lot of freedom from that. Um, we enjoy the simpler things in life. Our pastimes usually involve things such as running, biking, board games, frisbee, hiking, camping. Did I miss anything? No, that's about Most it. things that are just wholesome and get us outdoors and enjoying beautiful nature around us and our time together as family. And at low cost, because mm. that's what we like. Traveling, too. I forgot to mention that. We do, do we a love lot of traveling. traveling. Anyway, with that little introduction about us, let's get started with the podcast. Let's roll. You're listening to the FamVestor Podcast. If you're looking to raise your family with intention, gain financial independence, and live a life of true freedom, then you're in the right place. Join us as we explore together how to create thriving families, because strong families are the cornerstone for a world at peace. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that introduction. So there's actually two versions of this podcast. There's an audio-only version through iTunes, Stitcher, all the normal podcast resources. But then we're also going to be uploading a video uh, version of this podcast via YouTube. So for those watching via YouTube, you can see some of our family clips during that introductory episode. Anyway, right now we want to go into some of the goals we have for this FamVestor podcast. Primarily, we really want it to be a valuable resource for families and intentional individuals seeking to you know, build a foundation for their future family. We're going to lay the groundwork for a tangible blueprint that you can follow or people you know may follow in their life. In Yeah. And we want to try to gather a community <laughs> of like-minded fam vesters or people you know, who are intentionally trying to build that strong family. There's nothing better than learning what other strong families are doing to inspire the growth of our own family. And we want to highlight, you know, inspiring individuals that we come across in our own lives. And some of our viewers may suggest other people to interview as well and just see what they're doing and how they're pursuing their passions while raising their families. We want to demystify success in the family. How do you go about it? What are some things that work for some families? What are some tips that could help you strengthen your own family? So with that, we kind of want to go into next our purpose, some of our beliefs, and some of the lessons we've learned as we've kind of raised our family. And as we noted in the introduction, this podcast is all about family, all about finance, and all about freedom. So we'll be touching on all three areas in all of our episodes. Right, so we really believe that you know kids don't have to be expensive. We we see all the time this notion that you know kids are expensive. You got to think about college. You got to have the nicest <clears throat> minivan. Everyone needs an iPhone and all this materialistic stuff. And something that we sus subscribe to in our life is that <clears throat> things don't bring happiness. Family brings happiness. Experiences bring happiness. The more intangible things in life are what truly bring you happiness. So to try to disconnect yourself from a materialistic mindset and reconnect with things that are more meaningful in your life. Right. And, you know, we always try to have purpose in our lives. So we always have a, try to have a definite purpose in all things. Always live life in the present moment. We really believe that time is your greatest asset. It's not all this accumulation of things. And really, greatness starts by doing things that few are willing to do. Right. So living with intentionality, thinking through every moment, every decision that you make, and really making the most of it, not just living reactionarily to life, but proactively reacting to your life's circumstance to improve it and improve those around you. Right. And I feel like we've been building a pretty strong foundation for our family. And we kind of want to go over some of the few intentional steps we've taken along the way uh, to kind of get here, get where we are. 
So I feel like we worked pretty hard, um, you know, throughout our lives, but especially in college, you know, I was squeezing in 23 credit semesters just so I can graduate with my master's uh, at the same time I was graduating with my bachelor's. And you graduated summa cum laude, um, you know, what did you have a 3.99999% GPA? <laughs> Something like that. Triple major too. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> so, you know, worked pretty hard and you know, we work we graduated with very low student debt, mm. which I think is very key and very, very key. contrary to many of the other graduates and peers we know who are graduating with like six figures in debt. And honestly, I think it was a uh, a great foundation for us to jump into our future life. Just not being saddled by huge amounts of student loan debt was a great advantage for us to plan out our future. Right. And then after graduating, you know, we got good jobs. You as a teacher, you know, you worked at as an art school te- at, as an art teacher in an elementary school, and I worked as a mechanical engineer for the Department of Defense. And we both made around, you know, $50,000. So $100,000 as a dual income couple. Uh, but we didn't, you know, once we got those jobs, we kind of tried to maintain our lifestyle. We didn't right. let our lifestyle inflate, right. and we always l- lived below our means. We made the decision to um, live very modestly and humbly from the get-go so that we could save for a future that we had mapped out for ourselves. Um, we've been big planners since the get-go, mapping out five-year goals and five-year plans. And and in doing that action step, it really helped us create a clear direction that we wanted to take with our life, which gave us reason to make certain sacrifices early Mm, on. Right, and gave us the discipline or, uh, yeah, the discipline we needed to really, yeah, to carry out our goals and achieve the freedom that we wanted to. So when we were making $100,000, you know, we were still living at my parents' house, actually. We lived in one bedroom that they had there. We gave them $500 a month rent, but we're able to save lots of cash by doing that. I think we saved around $75,000 in two years. Mm. And it wasn't easy. You know, there was nine adults in that little house, my parents' house, and only one bathroom, Mm. which kind of sounds crazy. Nine adults, one bathroom. It was was a fun time. (laughs) Very humble start, um, but we were It was were a happy sacrifice to save for our future. We knew why we were doing it, and it was worthwhile. When we look back now, we have fond memories of those moments in our lives and those years that we spent with his family, not only for the family bonds that were created and the closeness that we gained with our extended family, but also uh, just just the ability to be able to save and plan for our future. Right. And, you know, with that 75000 that was our down payment for our rental property. Which was our first home purchase. We didn't go out and buy the, the single family home. We made the decision to yet again sacrifice and purchase a multifamily property, not our dream home right. at the get-go. So it was a four-family property. We lived in one <laughs> of the units and rent out the other three. We actually still live in this property today. It's four three-bedroom units, so we have a nice three-bedroom unit. We took the worst one, fixed it up, and now it's the nicest one. But you know, making those sacrifices for our eventual freedom, actually, uh, when we bought that four-family house, you were pregnant, or no, Valen, our eldest son, um, was six months old at right. the time. and you were on maternity leave and you were on maternity leave for a full year at that point but we just decided you know the gross rental income that's coming with this property while we live in one of the units for free replaced her income dollar for dollar so we were getting like 50k gross rental income that was her salary it was a very easy decision Um, you know we're very focused on our family we want to intentionally raise them and so we decided it's time for you to retire right so I retired at at age 28 (laughs) ripe young age of age 28 and haven't looked back since. Honestly, it's been very freeing. The lifestyle that we've chosen has allowed me to really be there for my children, which is what I always dreamed my future would would hold. So I'm really grateful for the freedom we've been able to accomplish through that one simple decision, which was buying the multifamily rather than the single family cottage. Right. And we were we were thinking about, you know, our vision board, what's our five year plan, what's our goals once we start having kids. Sunmi was homeschooled growing up and, you know, she she really feels strongly that we want to homeschool our own kids, convinced me. So now we're both on the same page of wanting to homeschool our kids. So we had to figure out, you know, how are we going to create this financial freedom in order to do this without it being like a drain or sacrifice or kind of um a friction point. Right, or, you know, living a lifestyle that was very um, uncertain financially. And we thought, you know, real estate, rental property investing, you know, while somebody's home with the kids, a lot of times she's acting as general contractor, fixing up the property and things like that. Right. 
Um, and I'm on call whenever there's a, a tenant request or need. I'm usually boots the on the ground. Uh, the boots on the ground. That's right. <laughs> right. And, you know, so, so we bought that four family property, we fixed it up, and we were able to do a cash out refinance, use the cash in that property to buy another one. So we bought a three family property in 2017. So that four family was in 2015. Next one was in 2017, a three family also close to New York City where we live. Also coincided with the birth of our second child. Right. <laughs> so now we have two rental properties, uh, seven units total, and together they're going to buy our freedom eventually uh, with the renovations we're doing now. We're incorporating Airbnb, we're incorporating some improvements to rent out basements, and um, yeah, so eventually it'll lead to our financial freedom just from these two properties alone. And we're we'll, excited to go over that with you in future episodes. So these are intentional steps we've taken so far to uh, really solidify the foundation upon which we are going to move forward with building our family. Um, and that's mostly the financial foundation. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this we will highlight on finance, but it's not just about finance. It's about, you know, the whole picture, family incorporating there too. And we've never taken, you know, our marriage for granted. We're continually investing in our marriage. I feel like we started with such a strong foundation in our marriage. And I feel like that is so important, not taking your partner for granted and really working at your marriage as you would work on anything else in your life that you want to succeed at. Marriage is no different, and that's uh, an approach we've taken um, through taking marriage retreats, marriage courses. Yeah, we even have an annual tradition to read the five love languages, which is our favorite relationship advice book uh, we've ever read. So we read that read every it, single year around October. It. I think we've read it nine, ten times now. Yeah. <laughs> but we still love the book. We we just listen to the audio book, but it's great. You know, it's four hours and it really enriches us each and every time. Right. And um, uh, we do lots of other things, too, in our in our lifestyle that promote healthy habits for our relationship and for our family. One thing that we do is we don't have a TV. Um, we don't have iPads that we uh, use for entertaining our children. Babysitting. Um, We've chosen intentionally to leave those out of our lifestyle so that the moments that we share together are not cluttered with wasted time not spent on each other, but every moment is really lived in that moment. And that's the hope that we can, you know, really enjoy the greater things, getting outdoors, doing more wholesome activities, reading together, biking together, hiking together, walking to the park even, just playing in the yard, simple things, moments that'll never come back and and uh, just being able to really appreciate them fully. Right, and we like to give back a lot too. You know, we've had a lot of successes in our life and, you know, throughout every stage of our life, you know, before we were married, you know, we were doing a lot of youth ministry volunteering and then we went on to, um, I don't know, we spoke a lot about our successes. We run meetups and we also... We've done young adult ministry as well. We've done um, young family ministry now. Yeah, currently we we hold a month or a weekly every Sunday morning. We have a pancake breakfast for all the young families in our community, and we get together and chat about family topics and improve and how to improve families, just like we're doing here today. Giving back is such an important aspect of life, and it can be both in terms of financially, but also giving of your time. And we're strong believers in that. That you know, if you if you have been blessed in some way to be fortunate either with um, money or with time or skills, the best thing you can do with that is to turn around and pay it forward or give it back to your community in ways that you can enrich the lives of others and help them to grow and reach their best possible versions of themselves. So that's something we really strive for and um, we want to uplift and encourage people through this podcast to do the same. And it's great to do it as a couple. You know, we have a common goal, common shared purpose throughout all of all of these things. And I feel like that's what a majority of our success has come from. You know, we agreed on a financial plan. We stuck to this goal. We both had discipline towards it and we both worked towards it. And that shared common purpose uh, both gave us strength and gave us that drive and right. really cemented our success in it. And we do that kind of in all our endeavors. And the magic that comes with it is the more that you do together, the more common experiences you share, the stronger your bonds become in your relationships. So, you know, getting that, that time together spent on mutually shared activities, giving back is invaluable in so many ways. Right. Um, so another thing, we love to have a lot of adventures as a family. 
and we love to see new places and travel. Uh, our eldest son, who's only four, has already been to nine countries. He's been to the UK, France, Switzerland, Austria, Germany, Canada, uh, even as a fetus in Japan. We, I uh, was pregnant. <laughs> pregnant, and she climbed Mount Fuji un yes. un unknowingly pregnant. Yes. Um, and then... Uh, so technically, our son has been to the peak of Mount Fuji. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been to Bermuda, St. Martin, uh, Puerto Rico, and Alaska, even though those aren't countries that felt they were notable mentions. Um, Lots of domestic travel as well. Yeah. Road and we, trips whenever possible. <laughs> and, you know, we always find creative ways to do all these things without spending lots of money. We uh, do travel hacking, so we'll go into a lot of that in a future episode. Yeah, uh, that's definitely something we want to share is to remove the myth that travel has to be expensive. There's actually lots of way that, ways that you can get around even internationally without spending spending a whole lot of money and breaking the bank and we'll get into that too. and a lot of we know a lot of families who just don't travel because they have kids now and you can't travel with kids you know or that's we, a concept right we mm -hmm. did a three-week backpacking trip <clears throat> in europe with nothing but carry-on with our six-month-old you know i had a hiking backpack you were just wearing a carrier and for th three weeks you know we just took them from place to place to place and it was great right. it really was great yeah. We'd I, do it again. And we only paid for one night's lodging, too, which was awesome. And anyway, we'll go into all that in a future episode. But yeah, we just always find ways to do what we want to accomplish in the best way possible. In the best way possible. That's right. So what we're hoping from this podcast is that, is that we can all learn together on our journey. Um, we'll probably d be discussing a lot of non-mainstream ideas to get us out of... Um, social norms and just thinking about the bigger picture, getting out of the box. Right. We want to teach these life-changing ideas that we've pursued on our own. There's so many things we want to talk about, like natural family planning. We want to talk about natural birthing, um, lots of family things, but also a lot of financial lots things of financial that are very things. different than what you hear day to day or what Savings you're... plans and budgeting. And just generally, we want to Investing. Teach people how to avoid the pitfalls of traditional family upbringing. And, you know, we want to create all these avenues of freedom for families so that they can better invest in their families. And spend more time together. Right. And along the way, you know, we have our successes, but we also have our defeats and our lessons learned. Um, some things that I can think of is cloth diapering and early elimination control <laughs> where we were trying to time when our babies would be uh potty trained potty trained like at you, you live know. and you learn and it works for some people it just didn't work for us but you know we we learned and so we want to share what we learned and also the guests that we invite on our shows will share things that they are uniquely successful at and we can learn from them so it's it's going to be a growing community and it's a value that i think we can all appreciate you know just learning from one another yeah, I'm really excited for some of the guests we've already had and the guests we have planned. It's going to be a really good learning environment, a really good show. I'm really, really excited. So if you want to grow your family and, and live with intentionality, then please join us in our future episodes because this, this is the podcast that uh, will probably be of great value. Right, and we want to you know challenge our guests. You know, We have a lot of great... Um, intentional podcast guests. We have a, a lot of great shows, and we want to challenge you to be a little more intentional with your lives. Maybe you can, you know, stop watching TV, give up the TV, even throw out the TV, um, and just stop reacting to life, but start taking control of your life, and you know, find other productive ways to spending some of your free time. So, just challenging, you know, our listeners to develop new skills that'll help you succeed in life. And, you know, pursue the life of your dreams. The life to stop surviving and to start thriving. To truly live the life that you always dreamt you could live. You know, there's nothing keeping you from it except your own limitations and the lack of knowledge. So hopefully here will help you expel those limiting beliefs and also give you the knowledge and skills you need to make that next step. So I hope you guys are as excited as we are. Uh, and, and I hope you will subscribe to this blog or this podcast because we have a lot of great shows coming up. We're going to give you a quick sneak preview of some of those episodes. Uh, the first couple is going to actually be kind of a more in-depth uh, view of some of our uh, accomplishments, our successes. 
and things that you can incorporate into your own family. Uh, things like uh, we had a dream wedding with over a hundred guests at a premier wedding venue for just $2,600 out of pocket. In northern New Jersey. Right. We've had uh, $10,000 in free flights in the last five years just using credit card reward points via travel hacking. Um, Like I mentioned earlier, we're going to have a a podcast just on how we saved $75,000 in two years. We'll also be sharing about traveling lightly with children and our backpacking journey through Europe as well as other trips we've taken with the children and how we've gotten around with merely carry-on luggage. Yeah, and also how we do a lot of multi-generational uh, family trips. We just came back from the Outer Banks where we spent a week with her parents and my dad came along. So, And it was a great family trip that we were all able to do together at a ridiculously cheap rate. And we'll get into those uh, money-saving tips. Right, and of course we'll tell about our <clears throat> real estate story of how we, you know, our we were a family of four on one income, and we house hacked our way from zero dollars to a million dollars in real estate in less than two years, and how those two houses bring in a hundred thousand dollars a year in gross rent. Yeah, so please join us for our future episodes, and don't forget to leave us feedback or questions if you have any for us. Or if you have any uh, suggestions as to guests we should interview, definitely send those along. My email is sunny at famvesta.com. Just go to famvesta.com slash contact, and you can also email us there. We also want to encourage you to take advantage of our resources on our blog. Just go to famvestor.com slash resources. I have a whole bunch of useful things. Uh, Primarily, my financial spreadsheet is really useful. I have my resume. I have all kinds of landlording tools, but also just life tools. We even have some parenting resources on there. Also, a lot of articles about traveling, travel hacking, um, finance 101, and... uh, and our, our wedding our wedding tips. Right. So definitely check out the blog. And, uh, you know, feel free to share with others. Don't keep this to yourself. You know, I feel like so much of what we share about really has life-changing potential that people incorporate into their lives. And it's free and educational. Right. So we're sh- building a community here. You know, the bigger the community, the richer and the greater it becomes because we are all sharing and contributing with one another. Right. So we hope you've enjoyed this introductory episode. We hope you're excited for the next couple episodes. And yeah, we're excited to see you next time. Godspeed.